Okay, class, <clears throat> where we are now is to start on the renal system. We now are starting on the renal system. Okay. Let's just glance at the anatomy of the renal system first, and then we'll look at we'll talk about some of the functions of the renal system. Okay. So basically, in the renal system, which is made up of organs, let's look at what we got. We have the kidneys here, and then the kidneys form urine, let's say, and that drains into something here called the ureters. So here's the kidney, the urine that's formed, and we'll go through details as we go through this particular aspect, of this chapter, forms in the kidney, and then it takes the urine it forms and goes down this tube here, oh, both, you know, two kidneys called the ureter. Then the ureter comes in and enters the urinary bladder. And then the bladder allows urine, you know, when you're ready to void, to go through the urethra. So urine would be formed in the kidney, travel down and do this. Now, as we're going to see in a moment, the kidney does more, has more functions than just formation of urine. But as far as the urine part, this is the sequence of events that occur, shall we say. Okay, so let's go over here now and look at kidney functions. This first one, filtration, is this job here. That's the formation of the urine. But basically, in its formation of urine, it also assists in fluid and electrolyte balance. Another organ that does that would be the sweat glands. Uh oh, here we are. We just talked about acid base balance. We said the two organs that are more intimately associated with that are what? The lungs and the kidneys. Gluconeogenesis, formation of new gl glucose. If you were doing prolonged uh, fasting, the kidney does have enzymes that can, that can produce glucose from other substances, like amino acids, for example. Production of renin, we talked about that. That was in the blood pressure deal. Helps regulate blood pressure. Erythropoietin. We talked about that. The kidney is one of the major that does erythropoietin in order to stimulate red blood cell production. Activation of vitamin D. That was an ANP1 deal. You may want to go back to my ANP1 in the chemistry that the kidney, uh, sunlight, sunlight does the first job on the first conversion. Then the liver does a second conversion, and the kidney does the third conversion. It has enzymes in these different areas to get to an active form of vitamin D. Thrombopoietin, the kidney did that, just like erythropoietin, in the production of the platelets, a stimulus, hormonal stimulus. Okay, so what we have, so these are functions that the kidney has. So there's more than just the urine deal, more than just the urine deal. Okay, let's go further now. So we said that you have two kidneys, paired ureters, urinary bladder, and then the urethra, which we had earlier described, right? Which was this this picture here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now, the kidney is located... If I look at the kidney, and this is that 70 kilogram person, then we're looking at something about 12 centimeters this way. This is just the average, about 12 this way, about six this way, and the thickness of it would be around three. Now that, that differs, that's just an average size. That's just an average size we're mentioning. 150 grams, you know, nothing really special. It lies in a retroperitoneal position in the superior lumbar region. Let's, let's inve investigate that portion right there. So in this drawing right here, here's your peritoneal cavity. This would be you doing surgery from the front. You would go through the different layers, remember? Go through the different layers. Let's just, just let's name the layers. Epidermis, dermis, hypodermis, right? deep fascia, and then the peritoneum, then the peritoneum, okay, this is the peritoneal cavity, but look here, behind the peritoneal cavity are the kidneys, 
They are retro peritoneal. They're behind the peritoneum. So that's why many surgery, surgeons, urologists, approach the kidneys from the back. Otherwise, you'd have to go in, sweep all the intestines out of the way, and then go to the kidney area. Okay, so it's retroperitoneal. Generally around that T12 to L3 lumbar region, right up in there. Right up in there. Just a, So the ribs are covering a lot of it right there to kind of give you protection. The right kidney is lower than the left kidney. The right kidney is lower than the left kidney. And the reason for that is the liver's on this side over here. So that causes, just like the lungs were higher up. Remember, the lungs on the right side were, were shorter. They were fatter, but they were shorter. And the kidney is, is, is a little lower. So you're getting some protection from ribs 11 and 12 on this deal here. Okay. The lateral surface is convex. The medial surface is concave. Convex, concave. The renal hilus, see the renal hilus is this area of the kidney that leads to the renal sinus. So let me go here. Okay. See, right here, we've got this. This is the renal pelvis right here. Okay. And then we've got the hilus, which leads to the renal sinus that I'll show you in a little bit there. Okay. The renal hilus. Okay. It is, it is the area, to say it another way, it's like the, the hilus of the lung. Let me put it this way. It's a region in the kidney where all the tubes come in and out. A region where all these tubes come in and out there. That's called the hilus. Same way with the lungs. With the lungs, there was a certain region that every, all the blood vessels and everything came in and out. Then we got the blood, lymphatics, nerves, and everything. Okay. And they all enter in this hilus region here. So it's not entrance any, just anywhere. It's in one area just like the lungs did. Go a little further. So what we have, we go to the kidney in the body. This is what we basically have. The, ki the kidneys are surrounded by a, and I'm, I'm going to start down here first. I'm going to start down here. I'm going to start the, the outermost. Okay. The kidneys are surrounded by a, renal fascia the renal fascia what the renal fascia is is dense irregular collagen connective tissue its job is contiguous with other areas so the renal fascia's job is to anchor the kidneys so they don't fall see that renal fascia is is anchoring to other dense irregular connective tissue so that the kidneys do not fall okay now, kidneys do fall sometimes. You could have a kidney if you lost a lot of weight and you, you the kidney would fall into the pelvis. Why is that? Because inside the renal fascia is the adipose capsule. The adipose capsule is a bunch of fat that cushions the kidney. You see, remember, you're only getting protection from ribs 11 and 12. So if you get hit in the side, the kidney could be damaged. But by having this fatty stuff around it, then that cushions it. But if you lost too much weight, now see, here's another thing. Certain fat in your body is called resistant fat. That's the fat in your body for structure. That's the fat in your body for structure. Okay. And so if you lose normal weight, you would only lose the weight in the hypodermis. Remember, hypodermis is the fat layer. That's, that's storage fat. But if you were to lose too much weight, you could lose from your resistant fat. That's the case. The kidneys could slip out, as I was mentioning, and fall down into the pelvis. So a lot of times we have to evaluate if we see a pelvic mass and not go in and cut too quick operate to be sure it's not the kidney by doing certain x-rays. 
Then we got the renal capsule, which is a is almost like a thin layer of saran wrap, a fibrous that prevents kidney infection. That's one thing it does. That's one thing it does. And it's a tight covering, a thin layer. It's like translucent, tight down on the kidney. One way is to prevent kidney infection. In other words, prevent infections in the peritoneum and back here from getting into the kidney. But the other thing it does is prevent over distension of the kidney. Prevent over distension of the kidney. To assist, I'm going to put that to prevent over distension of the kidney. That's another function of it, let's say. Because you say, what does that mean? If, for example, if, for example, the ureters got blocked, you would still be forming filtrate in the kidney, and the kidney would start to swell because it couldn't deliver its product here. That's what we call hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis. So by having that tight saran wrap covering, it tries to hold as best as it can pressure for a while so the kidney does not over distend. Over distension of the kidney will cause kidney damage because when it over distends, it compresses on the blood vessels too. And it could cause ischemia. You know what ischemia is? Decreased blood supply and possible necrosis. Okay. All right. Let's see where we are now. Let's go further. So here's a picture showing the retroperitoneal aspect. All right, where are we now? Now, on the internal anatomy of the kidney, and I think what I'm going to do on that is to start a new video labeled in internal kidney anatomy. Okay, thank you.